Who would believe what we have heard? Isaiah describes a man of sorrows, rejected and spurned. And he continues, upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. Jesus is this man of sorrows, scorned and crucified, foretold by the prophet. Who would believe that this dying man could offer us life? Who would believe that those crucified in our own world today could offer us life? Certainly inspired by this text, the early church rejoiced in singing St. Paul's hymn. Though he was in the form of God, Jesus did not deem equality with God something to be grasped at. Rather, he emptied himself and took the form of a slave, being born in the likeness of men. He was known to be of human estate, and it was thus that he humbled himself, obediently accepting even death, death on a cross. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we make the way of the cross, we unite our prayers to those who are suffering today, especially those suffering from illness, coronavirus, from fear, uncertainty. We ask the Lord to help us to continue our Lenten journey, especially embracing this devotion to the Stations of the Cross. Jesus chose the path of self-abasement. He descended into the darkness and frailty of the human condition to bear our deepest burdens, but only in order to rise again with the multitude of his brothers and sisters in humanity to his beloved Father. Jesus invites us to follow him along the same descending path in order to rise with him in the glory of the Father. First station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. Jesus, bound, crowned with thorns, cloaked in royal purple, stands before Pilate. He is the pauper king, bound and humiliated, the king of the communion of hearts. The crowd shouts out, crucify him, crucify him. Disillusionment lies hidden behind their words. He has disappointed us. We thought he would be strong and powerful enough to free us from the Roman yoke. No one wants a weak little Messiah who seeks the communion of hearts instead of power. And what about us? Where do we stand today? Are we close to those men and women condemned to illness, rejection, humiliation, and poverty? Let us pray. Jesus, Jesus meek and humble of heart, Jesus, Jesus found Lord, King of hearts, give us your heart, relinquished into the hands of the Father. Help us never to condemn others, those who are different or who are outsiders. Second station, Jesus takes up his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. There was in him no stately bearing to make him look, to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. Jesus, exhausted, receives upon his fragile shoulders the beams of heavy wood. He accepts this trial. He is silent. Behold, the hour is coming, he said to his disciples, and has arrived when each of you will be scattered to his own home, and you will leave me alone. But I am not alone, because the Father is with me. 
every day we are each called to carry our cross. If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his daily cross and follow me. For each one of us, our hour of trial will come. Let us pray. Jesus, Jesus please, please walk, walk before, before us. We, we wish to follow you. Grant us the strength of your Holy Spirit, that day after day we may become more like you, accepting the trials that purify us and unite us to you, that your kingdom of love may come. Jesus falls under the weight of the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. He was spurned and avoided by men, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity. Jesus falls from exhaustion. He falls under the crushing weight of the wooden beams and the cruelty of men. He falls before those who mock him because they seek a strong side. Yet here he is, weak, the man of sorrows, who falls weeping. Who will raise him up? Let us pray. In our day, so many sink down under the weight of depression, crushed by sadness, isolation, overcome by feelings of guilt. They are unemployed or immigrants or frail of health. Their friends abandon them, not knowing what to do or even how to approach them. We would like them to be strong and capable, yet here they are, we, men and women of sorrow, who fall, who weep, who will raise them up. Oh, how sad and sore distressed was that mother of a soul begotten one. Fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. One of those from whom men hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. The mother of Jesus does not hide her face. She knows who he is, the beloved son of the Father, her beloved son, her one and only. She knows his mission of love and accompanies him to the very end. They look into each other's eyes. The sorrowful, loving gaze of Mary says to him, I am with you always. I have faith in you. Let us pray. Father, grant us the love and trust we need to remain close to those who suffer, to stand up for those who bear the cross of rejection, to look with love upon those in pain, never to flee from them, but to accompany them to the very end, to say with all our being, I have faith in you, I am with you. Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus carry his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured. While we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted. Simon, a simple worker coming home from the field, is ordered by the soldiers to help Jesus carry his cross. The soldiers fear that the exhausted Jesus will be unable to carry it on to the end. Simon gazes at Jesus. He is moved by his suffering and by the sorrowful peace in his eyes. 
He helps him bear the heavy wooden beams, unaware that it is in fact Jesus who shows our suffering. We are ready to walk alongside those crushed by suffering, to help those, to help them bear their crosses perhaps without saying a thing. Let us pray. Jesus, you who are there, hidden with those who fall in me, grant us the strength and the love to be there too, shouldering their too heavy burden with them. Is there one who would not be whelmed in misery so deep? Christ, dear Mother, to Sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. That he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. O woman, O Veronica, O you who love Jesus, you dare to step out of the crowd to wipe his face, his eyes blinded with blood and sweat. Jesus gazes at you with such tenderness and gratitude. His face, at once so beautiful and so disfigured, will remain imprinted forever in the memory of your heart. You will never forget his gaze of gratitude and love. Let us pray. Jesus, grant us the courage and the strength of love to step out of ourselves, out of our comfort and our fears, to step away from the indifference of the crowd, to wipe your face and the face of the poor, to see your face in the gaze of the poor. Seventh station, Jesus falls for the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. By his stripes we were healed. Despite the meeting with his dear mother, the presence of Simon, and the tenderness of Veronica, Jesus falls a second time. His body is battered. Now it is up to me to all of us, to be there with him, to help him rise again. As we touch his wounds, do we dare to believe that we can be healed as he was? Let us pray. At times, we too fall under the weight of depression and the agony of bereavement or separation in physical or psychological pain. We await someone to come and raise us up again to give us back our confidence in ourselves and in life. Will you be there, my brother, my sister? you have redeemed the world. We have all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. So many men and women today wander aimlessly in our cities and towns, lost, without bearings, with no guide to lead them. They weep as the news reveals all the horror of wars, genocides, refugee camps. In his weakness, Jesus says, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. Let us weep for our world. Let us pray. Jesus, bring forth in your church and in society good shepherds, guides, and witnesses to awaken our hope, to show us the way toward unity and peace. For the sins of his 
Jesus takes our sins upon himself. He is crushed by violence in the blows of rods. He, the gentle one who loves each one of us, his heart is torn apart by the hatreds and fears that inhabit our hearts and prevent us from welcoming love. He sinks down in the throes of sorrow. Let us pray. Jesus, your prophet announced the good news to the people. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. Break our hearts of stone, tear away our fears, open us up to love and to your presence. You came to live in a communion of heart with each one of us and to give us life. Come, Lord Jesus, come. submitted and opened not his mouth. Jesus is stripped, stripped of energy, of all movement, stripped of his friends and his disciples, stripped of honor and dignity, and finally stripped of his garments. Here he is, naked, exposed to the sight and mockery of men. He says to us, I was naked and you clothe me, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Let us pray. Jesus, grant us the courage and the strength to clothe those who are naked, stripped of their dignity, to cover them with the raiment of our respect. shepherd leading his sheep to green pastures. Later, he kneeled down to wash the feet of his disciples and raise them up. Now, he lies upon a cross, and he opens not his mouth. Now, the king of love is bound hand and foot. He gives up his life, offering himself as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He transforms the hate and violence by crushing into forgiveness and tenderness. Let us pray. Jesus, shed your light upon all those bound by sickness and suffering, that they may discover an overflowing abundance of life in their place in the church, like a hidden spring called to irrigate the arid earth of our world. Oppressed and condemned, 
he was taken away. Jesus is seized, tortured, crucified by fear and hatred. He who offered love is rejected, alone, put to death. But no, he is not alone. Mary is there, standing by the cross. He is stripped of all except this presence of communion. Mary tells him, I love you. I offer myself to the Father with you. Her heart is pierced by a sword. She is the woman of compassion. Let us pray. Jesus, Jesus grant us hearts of compassion that we may remain standing close to the crucified of this world and offer ourselves to the Father with them. Let me share with thee his pain, who for all my sins was slain, who for me in torments died. Thirteenth station. Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Who would have thought any more of his destiny when he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people? Joseph of Arimathea, Nicodemus, and John take the body of Jesus down from the cross. Water and blood flow from his pierced heart. They lay his body, so beautiful, so delicate, so wounded, upon Mary's knees. She remains there, silent, broken, crushed. She weeps. Hers are tears of sorrow, of faith. Let us pray. Father, in the face of all the suffering of the world, all the violence and death we encounter, we ask you to give us Mary, Mother of Jesus, Mother of Consolation, Mother of Beautiful Love. Let me mingle tears with thee, pouring in who mourned for me all the days that I Fourteenth station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A grave was assigned to him among the wicked, in the burial place of evildoers, though he had done no wrong, nor spoken any falsehood. The tomb is sealed with a stone. All is finished. Peter and the apostles are in dismay, utter disarray. Mary Magdalene weeps. Mary keeps the words and promises of Jesus in her heart. She enters into the great silence of this Saturday day, a day of waiting, a day of trust. When it all seems to be over, hope in the promises of Jesus remains. Let us pray. When our hearts are crushed and broken, when we are on the brink of despair, we implore you, Jesus, place in us the seed of hope, your word. In his own body, he brought your sins to the cross, so that all of us, dead to sin, could live in accord with God's will. By his wounds, you were healed. Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The word of the Lord.
words that we're familiar with from, from scripture, from this reflection, uh, are even more true of the times we live. We must stay close to Mary. May she be our constant guide so that we continue to have hope and rejoice in him. Let us pray. Hail Mary, full, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed, blessed art thou amongst women, women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus. Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Because Jesus humbled himself, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every other name, so that at Jesus' name every knee must bend in the heavens, on the earth, and under the earth, and every tongue proclaim to the glory of God the Father, Jesus Christ is Lord. The Lord be with you. Yes, May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and all who pray would watch this video. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.